Today I want to share how I use a V-flat as a gobo to create interesting and graphic shadows on the background. Lindsay Adler here, and if you know my work, you know that I love graphic elements. Graphic makeup, graphic clothing, graphic backgrounds, clean, bold, and graphic is part of my style. And since there are many different ways to achieve this, today I actually wanna show you how you can use lighting in order to make an interesting and graphic element to your background. So if you take a look at the photograph here, you can see that the background is white on one side and black on the other. Now, this perhaps could be achieved in Photoshop, but today I wanna to show you how you can achieve it mostly just through lighting, and then you can make some tweaks in your post-processing. So let's take a look behind the scenes. Let's take a look at the main light on our subject. I'm using an extra large white umbrella with diffusion, which fundamentally is a large soft light source. So it's going to give even illumination across my subject. But that's not going to affect the background. Basically the background is just going to be a medium gray. The, the actual background that I've chosen here is Savage Universal Fashion Gray. It's not very light, it's not very dark, but that means I can actually push and pull the tones. I can make it white by lighting it, or I can make it black by pulling the light away. And so this is where the creativity in this shot comes into action. I have a second light that's not quite visible in this scene, but it's hidden behind the V-flat to the far left. And I'm using barn doors. So I'm using a hard light source. And how I create that sharp line of light on the background is I'm actually using that V-flat as a gobo. Gobo stands for go between, go between the light. Basically that V-flat, I'm closing part of it so that it's casting a shadow onto the background. So on the left-hand side of the frame, the barn doors are quite bright. It's brought up with the exposure, so it lights that gray background to be white. But on the right-hand side of the frame, it's not being illuminated. The V-flat is blocking the light, so it becomes very, very dark. Let's take a look at this uh, from another angle, but before we do, let me talk a little bit about my camera. In this shot, I was using a Canon 24 to 105 on a Canon 5D Mark IV. And the reason I was using this lens is I achieved some shots that were wider, full length shots, and others I cropped in for beauty shots. And so by using a 24 to 105, I can change my focal length really, really easily uh, in order to achieve many crops without wasting a lot of time changing my gear. All right, so let's take a look at that other angle. So this is looking back towards where the camera is, and you can see how those barn doors are actually lighting uh, the background, but being blocked by the V-flat. Now, I use barn doors because originally I was trying to cast the shadow using the leaves of the barn doors, but unfortunately it wasn't crisp enough. So I had to bring in the V-flat and I could bring the V-flat closer to the background to make that shadow even sharper. The closer it is back to the light, the more diffused that shadow would be. So let me show you what it looked like out of camera so you could see what I was capturing. So this is straight out of camera and I was shooting tethered and you can see that it wasn't a black and white image to start off with. But since this image is all about shape, it's all about graphic elements, I didn't think that color was adding anything to the image. It's all about what the concept is. And so what I decided to do is as I was shooting tethered, I put on a pretty strong black and white contrast effect. And so you can see the image really becomes quite close to what it was in the final result here. Pure white on the left, black on the right, lots of contrast. Now, as I analyze this image, um, I'd be fine with it as is, but there's a few distractions I wanted to clean up. Uh, first of all, the little piece of fabric sticking out in front of her stomach there, uh, it looks nice on the dress, but you can't really tell what it is here. And so I think it would be useful to create a cleaner line in the front and remove that element of the dress. Also, I can see out of the back of the dress, just a little bit of her elbow, which breaks up the nice curve. So I think removing that would be a, a better way to create a clean image. Um, looking at it, there's a few veins in the forehead and maybe a couple of the wrinkles in the neck that could be removed. I don't need to remove all of them. I'll keep one so that it looks natural, but I don't think you know three or four or five are really adding to the photograph. So this is how I cleaned up the image a bit in Photoshop. Now, when I cleaned it up and when I was doing my retouching, I'd actually originally backed off of some of the contrast. I didn't want to lose any detail on the whites. I didn't want to lose any detail on the shadows. I didn't want to blow out the skin. And so before I actually retouched, I pulled back a little bit on that contrast. But then once the image was cleaned up, I was thinking, man, I want to add that contrast back in. So this is the final addition of contrast achieved in Photoshop. I cleaned up that element in the front of the dress and I also liquefied the back of the dress to be a bit larger. 
The last thing that you'll notice, if we go back to the original image and then pop up to where we ended, is I cleaned up that transition at the top of the frame from highlight to shadow. I could have left it a gradual transition, but because I wanted the image to be quite graphic, I decided to put a crisp line that would run into uh, the top of her head. Here's the thing. You could achieve this in post. You could go ahead and cut out the subject and do the black and white effect, but it was actually quite easy to do it with my lighting. So when you are thinking about how you can work with graphic shapes, you can do so with your clothing, with your makeup, like you see here, I use both graphic elements, but you can also do so with your set design and your background. So as you are thinking about adding interest and composition throughout your photograph, you can do so throughout many different elements. If you wanna check out the gear that was used in creating this image, be sure to check out the links in the description below or visit adorama.com. And of course, if you wanna see more videos like these, more photo deconstructions, more of my creativity, be sure to subscribe. See you next time.